six months working on that um, and I wanted to go over some backup stuff with you just forgive the raspiness of my voice please um, and I thought the best tool I had for doing this would be within the context of sp specific songs and I've chosen Handsome Molly with a circle being broken and Fireball Mail and I could have chosen any one of hundreds of songs to do this with, but those are songs that I've already shot video for the um, lead parts. So uh, I thought since you already probably learned the lead parts of those songs, if you haven't, then go back to, to those videos. Um, you might want to do that anyway because I'm going to be going back and forth between the backup sequence and the lead sequence for all these songs. In their respective videos. So let's get started on this and I'm going to start with a chord and this is my G chord. And all these uh, chord chops I do fourth string and three two and one as a chop. Four chop. I'm up here. I'm not in my usual spot down here where it's real brassy sound. I, I want it to be more mellow sounding because it's backup banjo, right? And we uh, we don't bring backup banjo to the front. We leave backup banjo in the back where it's supposed to be. And it's probably a little bit quieter than uh, your standard... Uh, lead part would be so we're not it's not an alternate lead part it's it's strictly to make the background music the background chords and things more interesting while somebody's singing or or a uh, fiddle is playing or somebody else is playing another instrument okay that's sort of my general philosophy about backup banjo it emphasis on backup so this is my g chord uh, ring fingers on the fifth fret of the fourth string. Um, <clears throat> middle fingers on the fourth fret of the third string. Index fingers on the uh, third fret second string. And pinky is on the fifth fret of the first string. I hit the fourth string first, and then I do my chop. And they're, they're abbreviated. They're not hold them for the full length of each one. I chop them off. Now while you're doing this, if you're brand new to this and you're just learning this is a G chord, also learn this is a C chord up five frets. Same shape. G, one, two, three, four, five, C. Two more, D. <clears throat> so you can work G back and forth with C. G, C, G, D, G, B. So that'd be that's the 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 backbone of backup banjo. Okay, is playing chords, and that's the majority of what you'll do when you're playing backup banjo. Okay, will be chord chops. So for now, we're just learning this one, G. Now the next next uh, chord, actually, actually is still a G chord, but it's a different voicing of the G chord. I'm going to be up here on the ninth fret, on the fourth string. And uh, I'm, I'm leaving these two uh, fingers on as I'm moving up, because they stay the same relative position to each other. These two two fingers switch places. So instead of going, instead of leaving it in the same position, which would be a B chord, I take my 
middle finger moving to the second string and take my index finger moving to the first Third. string. I can get it. That's my inverted G chord. I call it the inverted G chord because it's actually the first inversion of the G chord because the B is the bass note now. G, G, and that's the first measure. So again, we take these individual really measures or sets of two measures and we'll work them individually. We'll isolate them and work them individually. So I'm going to spend some time doing G, inverted G, G, inverted G. might want to stop the video here and just say I'm going to work on that or if you're inclined to move on we'll move on so this next lick I'm going to take these two fingers off the front two fingers the ring and the pinky are coming off I'm going to take these two fingers leave them in the same position relative to one another scoot them back one fret I'm going to slide forward with both fingers, even though I'm only playing the second string. I'm, I'm, I want to have both fingers in place while I do the rest of the lick. So uh, I'm going to hit the fifth string first. I'm going to slide the, sec slide the second string. I'm going to slide my index finger at the same time, even though I'm not playing that string yet. I want, I want both fingers in place. Hit it again. So, fifth string, seven, eight, eight. Slide, and again. And then this one, this is going to be my third finger on the ninth fret. Back to the seventh fret where my index finger already is, see? And slide both, both fingers. Because I want this one to be in place for when I work it back and forth with my third finger. Third finger, third finger on the fourth string. Now I'm going to go to my open one. Like that, just because I think that sounds better, because I like the sound of the open string. So that's that measure. One and two and three and four and. And now my next measure, I'm coming back. I'm leaving these fingers in place. Really, those two measures kind of go together. One and two and three and four and one, two, three. And I do all four of these notes with my thumb on my right hand. So and that's second string, third string, third string, fourth string. Okay, so so far I've got my G, inverted G, slide. Next is my, this is my D lick, um, and it's, it's the D chord that I referred to before, C, D, 12, 11, 10, 12, and I'm just doing two chops on the D chord, and again, if, if you're having trouble with that, you know, work your G, C, D, C, You can work songs like that, like she'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. Or you can work this one. I wish I was back in London or some other seaport town. Set my feet on the steamboat and sail the ocean round. You know, you could do that. If you just want to work on your chord shapes. So, anyway, D twice. Now, my next little sequence, I'm going to stay on this D chord. And you can take your ring finger off because none of this has, none of this uses the fourth string. It's three, two, one. And I'm going to run my thumb across. It's one of those rare occasions where you, you uh, actually use your thumb to fret a note on the fifth string. 
once you get get to where you can do that, then the lick is real easy. Three, two, one, five, two, one, five, two, one, five, two, one, five, two, one. Okay. Now, one alternate way to do this, if you just absolutely can't run your thumb across there, would be to use these three fingers for your D chord. And then run your index finger across like so. See if I can do it. Like so. I find it much easier since I do my D chord like this anyway, just to bring my thumb around. Some people have smaller hands. I've had pretty good luck with uh, just with people saying, I cannot do that, it's just impossible. And I say, well, try anyway. And then they come back and then a couple of weeks later and say, oh, by the way, I'm able to do this now. So you may be able to do that more than you think you're able to do it now. So I would recommend you give it a try. Okay, that's that two measure D sequence. Well, actually we got three measures of D. Some of the seaport town, I'd set my feet on the steamboat and... Now, here's what we're gonna do with our C chord. We're gonna scoot back two frets, same shape. I'm gonna invert my C chord the same way I inverted my G chord. Up four frets and swap out my index and middle, leave these two in place. Okay, so I'm inverting my C chord the same way I inverted my G chord a while ago. C, C. Okay, that's all there is to that. And once you've got this down, you probably will have no trouble doing that one. And that's a, a tenth fret, ten, uh, nine, eight, ten. 14, 12, 13, 14. So you want to practice that by itself. So. Okay. Now, next lick I'm going to do is this little syncopated high G thing. One and two and three. experimented with this quite a bit and I've pretty much determined the best way, easiest way to do this is with your ring finger up here and then index, index and run my index finger back to 12 and ring again and then that frees up my index finger for these two slides. Now leaving my ring finger in place. No, so I'm not. I'm not lifting it up, I'm leaving it in place. 12, 14, slide, 14, slide. And the hardest thing about this lick is the rhythm. One and two and three, four, one, two and three and four and. It's kind of syncopated, so you gotta, best, best thing is to count eighth notes. One and two and three, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Or just listen and, and imitate me. It'll take a little bit of practice with this lick. Hope you can see that all right. Yeah, you can see that. Twelve, fourteen, slide, fourteen, slide. Okay. So we get past that. Next couple of licks are, should be familiar to us. This one is from Fireball Mail. That would measure. And again, I use my pinky here. We've seen that one before. Uh, the next one is a Foggy Mountain Breakdown high part lick. We've seen that one before. So hopefully you've been over those videos before and, and have learned both of those licks. Okay, 
I'm not going to dwell on them very long because I already did that on Fireball Mail for this one and Foggy Mountain Breakdown for this one. Okay, I'm up up to my D again. I'm just it's it's the same chord. I'm just leaving off the fourth string and and uh, instead of my my ring finger hitting the fourth string, I'm up on the first string like so. This is a four diverse roll, but it ends on the on the quarter note. One and two and three and four. That gives me time to move on up to my next lick. One and two and three and four. And this one, 14, 15, 16. So I'm going there and there. It's a, another inverted. Um, it's, it's the same as if I did this with my D chord. I went from D to D. Same way I went from C to C a while ago, or from G to G. Except in this case, I'm leaving off the fourth string. And again, replacing my pinky up here with my, because it's easier, I just learned to do it with my third finger. You could do it with your pinky if you want to. I just do it with my third, it just seems more logical that way. So anyway, this is 14, 15, 16. And again, running my thumb across 14 here on the fifth string. Now this is the same, same sequence with my right hand that I did down here. Three, two, one, five, two, one, five, two, one, five, two, one, five, two, one. Three, two, one, five, two, one, five, two, one, five, two, one, five, two, one. Five, two, one. Okay, same right hand sequence. And this is a D seventh, because that's a C introducing the flat seven into the chord makes it a seventh chord. This is a D ninth. There's my D, this is an E. Introducing the E into, into the D chord makes it a D ninth. So we'll work on that. And I'm back down here to my C chord. Which should be pretty familiar to you by now. And then I'm ending it with my Scruggs G run. Because I want to lead myself back down the neck uh, in, case, in case I'm coming back in to play another lead part. So I'll be... Wish I was back in. Okay. Or if you do another, another backup sequence, I wouldn't recommend you do the exact same backup sequence twice in a row. You could just uh, chop chords on the next one. Or you could incorporate some of the licks that we're going to learn when I do uh, Will the Circle Be Unbroken and then when I do Fireball Mail because we're going to learn more G licks, more C licks, and more D licks in both of those, okay? So, let's take it from the top. I'm going to assume that you've worked the individual parts of this and are, we're starting to put it together now. So it's now one, two, ready, go.
video and you can learn that step by step just like I do uh, in all my other videos and uh, then I'm gonna flow seamlessly hopefully into the backup part and uh, try to sing over that just as a placeholder to let you know where you're at in the song and and what phrases <clears throat> go with what uh, backup licks and that kind of thing and again, no guarantees about my voice. I'm doing the best I can here. So, okay. One, two, three, four, one. <laughs> intention is to teach you the licks themselves so keep that in mind 